We just started the recording for this and uh, we're going live. We should be there. Yeah, we're live on uh, on, uh, on uh, Facebook. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. This is our little Monday casual get together. I don't sign in with any of the big graphics and stuff like that. And it's just a very easy peasy kind of program. Oh, man. I'm just, I just went on and all these people are here. Look who's here today. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Charlie Wallace is here. Uh, and um, uh, let's see here. I admitted all. I thought I admitted all. Let me admit all. Oh, there we go. There we go. I, I leave it to me to screw up. Okay. Wow. Here we go. We got Shecky and we got Mandy and we got Edward Berger. Uh, Mr. Cartoon Voice. That's right. <laughs> Does that make you laugh, Rick? I mean, he he really should be doing cartoon voices. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, if I if I were old, young enough to be an agent, I think I'd probably represent you and take you around all the. Uh, cartoon okay. Voices. Yeah, you've got. Yeah. <laughs> and Jeff Stein is here. And uh, Len LaFrisco. Hello, Len. And we'll probably be joined by Marjorie soon, but she's still talking to her friend. So uh, how's everybody been? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just got Steve Bender here. Let me add him to the mix. Okay. I want you to know the last week, we got a lot of people after the fact watching the show. I only see like eight people watching the show while we're doing it. But after we do it, everybody really wants to see the pop-up show. <laughs> because it's a pleasant show it's a pleasant show that's what i like about it i don't know how i would like to make the nighttime show pleasant but i don't know how to we'll, we'll, we'll just all show up you know what it could be it could be the time of day yeah right? you know? somebody want to get that yeah don't, i'll get rid of it. i'll get rid of whoever this is yeah. wait a minute let's listen to him yeah, you don't have to. It's one of those uh, phony calls. <laughs> why does why does the, why, I, I, this isn't political actually? But why doesn't the government do something about these robocalls? Why can't they get rid well, of? Well, they supposedly did last week, but I still get them. Still what do you mean? Them. Last week there was something done. There was like a bill making it. I forget exactly some kind of fine. You can't, get rid, you can't get rid of them because they can spoof the numbers. Yeah. I was, sitting, I was sitting here one night watching TV and up on the phone, it tells me who's calling, right? It was my own number. So I picked it up to see what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I never answer any call from 718, my area code, because right. they're always phony calls. So it was okay, but, you know, uh, I, look, I'm an older person. Did anybody notice that, by the way, that I'm an older person? No, hadn't noticed. Hadn't noticed. I'm, oh, wait a minute. Here, uh, Marjorie wants to come on. Shall I let her? Nah. Um, <laughs> uh, if I don't, uh, there's no dinner tonight. Uh, <laughs> hello there, dear. How are you? Steve Bender's here, and Lynn LaFrisco, and Jeff, and Mandy, and Edward, and Rick, and Charlie. Guy. This is great. Anyway, yeah, Marjorie. by the way, Chisholm won't be <laughs> won't be here today. Who? Mike Chisholm. Oh, mm. okay. he's got a day date with his wife. Oh, oh in other words, we're saying he's pussy whipped. <laughs> well, he sent me an email. <laughs> he would be here. Wow. You know, I'm you learned, heard that? I think I think you learned <laughs> something in life, and again, at my age, I've learned it eventually is that no matter what the argument, no matter what the situation, your wife is always right. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Absolutely. The reason your wife is always right is you just don't want an argument. She usually is. But tomorrow we have, I, I had to give in to something that was so ridiculous, but I'm doing it ridiculous. anyway. What do you mean? You went and bought pies in Midtown for Thanksgiving. Why Thanks. did you buy pies in Midtown for things? They make the pies. Just they have pies. Up. Why don't you buy Harlem pies? There's got to be a Harlem Just pie. Pick shop. them up. Huh? Just I got to go all up. the way down to 43rd Street and I got pies and I got to take a cab back because I'm not going on the subway with a bunch of pies. Oh, I think I've gone to that place years ago. 
<laughs> Little Pie Company. Like off Ninth Avenue. Is that yeah. the place? Yeah. Because it's the work there. It's they all the them. way over at Ninth Avenue. <laughs> Are you out of they your have mind? Great pies if it's the same place I'm, th I'm thinking yeah, of. It is. Where is it? 43rd and 9th? Yeah, like between 9th and 10th. So the subway gets off at 5th. No, you can take a subway to 8th, the A train. Oh, you're right. <laughs> and you come up to 43rd Street and you walk a block. You see, he knows the subway system. You ever want to know how to get around the subway system and, and navigate it, Shecky's your guy. Oh, yeah, I know exactly where the right exit is to get off at 42nd Street, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there is a good Basque restaurant down in that area, but you don't want too many people going there because you want to put all your Basques in one exit. Oh, God. I just had to do that. I just had to do that. When you said exit, somehow that, that joke just came alive. Tell them what we're watching that we love. Hmm? The thing, the th thing that we're watching that we love so much. What do you mean that we love so much? The show, the TV show. Oh, um, uh, Giants. You, um, Giants. yeah. You're talking about. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. You're talking about uh, uh, the, the great. The great. The great. Anybody see the great? No. It's on Hulu, and it's by Catherine the Great. But it's really funny. It's in a comedy. It, 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 well, I don't know if they classify it as a comedy, but it is a comedy. It's very funny. You know, uh, is there a horse involved? Uh, yes. Well, they, <laughs> there isn't a horse involved. That's the rumor. And she keeps yelling at people. I never fucked a horse. <laughs> you know, that comes up every now and then on the, in the show. It's but, so adorable. It's very fast paced. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 she has a, it, it's just funny. Yeah. I, I told Shecky to watch it. I think he would really like it, actually. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's a good show. Uh, what else are we watching? It makes a smile. Uh -huh. What else are we watching? Anything? Well, it's Doctor Who, which is unwatchable this season. Doctor I Who. I, I got through ten minutes part. last night. That's as far as I got last night. Yeah. Well, I'll try and get through twenty minutes and then eventually finish it up. I, I finished up. Uh, I finished up Star Girl for this season. When was that last episode broadcast? Because I didn't download it. That three weeks ago, maybe. Really? So I just saw it now. Yeah. So anyway, see, that's 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 what life is. Life is this. Marjorie says to me, is there anything to watch tonight? That's our social life. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's like something I never realized. Apparently, people are pissed off because Supergirl, which ended their run, she didn't announce she's gay. What? Well, why should she announce she's gay? Well, apparently people in this world believe she and the character Lena Luther are girlfriends. Why? But why is it we have to make everybody, I mean, like Superman, who is now <laughs> Superman 2, right? He's not the... Right, Superman. it's Superboy who's Superman. Who's now Superman, has come out. Yeah, well, he's, he's bisexual. Bisexual. Like, oh, I mean... Well. Do, do we really have to? Can't somebody in do this world care? still be straight? My wife and I have a... Uh, Wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm checking in. Mandy, you straight? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to know that all my... All my I know. I think it's completely stupid. Like, what yeah. is the point? Like, yeah. who cares? Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Who cares? Well, the fact that they're making a big deal out of it means who cares? You know, yeah. you know, his Supergirl I mean, ended with this big gay wedding, also. Oh, really? Yeah, her sister. Her sister. Oh, her. Well, her sister's been gay through the whole show. No, I think she was gay in the third season. Oh, whatever. You know. <laughs> hmm. Well, the show is. But there's a big. There was a big gay wedding. Well, the producer is gay, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of, and I don't mind that, you know, there's a woman who's falling in love with a woman, but it's when you make a big deal out of it rather than let it just blend into the plot. 
you know uh, i was watching an interview <clears throat> there's this beanie feldstein you know who i'm talking about broadway yeah actress. okay broadway actress. she played yeah. uh, monica Lewinsky on For that sure. series that we were watching yes and yesterday i'm watching an interview with her because she's in a movie that's going to be on showtime uh and it's called the humans it was taken from a i think a broadway play actually and um she's in that and as she's talking she goes blah 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 blah. and i didn't get to see my partner for a year is that code it's not code she's gay well no, no not necessarily your partner. partner you're my partner partner you're my partner yeah but you don't say that <laughs> you've never said i was introduced but this is my partner well but but you could say that but people, we don't people, people do say it or no, yeah, i used yeah, to say that for the most part partner is that, is that saying i from. but why don't you just say my um uh, my girlfriend <laughs> Why, why do you have to say my partner? Are you trying to not exactly come out when you say that that way? Who knows? No. Not important. Not important. At least we just found out that Mandy isn't gay. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we never thought she was gay. <laughs> but I'm still wondering about Marjorie because she talks to her girlfriend every day at three o'clock. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alex, it looks like uh, Mandy and I may get a chance to meet. She's going to be five, five minutes away. She's at the next resort up. I looked it up. So we're going to try and get together and have a cocktail. <laughs> yep, for <laughs> sure. Are you both going to where? Cabo. Cabo. Yeah. So when are you doing that? I'm going Friday. Uh, next week. She's next going week. next week. Oh, so yeah. neither of you will be on the show next week. No. Probably I will. Not. I will be on the show next week. I don't go till Wednesday. The oh, first. Oh, okay, okay. I, I may try to join for a minute or two from from the beach. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> oh, that's Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have people to call all the time from wherever they happen to be. Yeah. In the world at the time, except for Checky, because he never, you know, he, he you're going to be on a cruise right over Christmas. Oh, I'll right? I'll call in from the cruise. <laughs> I have free yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, well, then then do it. You know, and we'll have yeah. have, have, you, have you from a cruise ship yeah. where you're where you're all getting some disease nobody ever heard of. <laughs> Scott and free cocktails. In, Scott Bodiger right. called in last Monday from uh, Panama City Beach, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the beach. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, that's the lovely thing about this. You can be anywhere and and call into the show. You know, incredible. Really Let incredible. that be a hint to other people who are watching right now, but don't call. Right. But, but I think that's what showed with, with businesses, that people could work from home. And if you have a meeting, you could do a Zoom meeting. Yeah. 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 Commercial real estate is taking a blitz right now. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, maybe they'll turn your office building into apartments or something. You know? Yeah, but, you know, they're <laughs> knocking down the Hotel Pennsylvania in about three weeks. Oh, mm. really? That's so Yeah. To put up an office building. Oh, oh God! Uh, this is, uh, you know, I mean, I. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I, last night, in the middle of the night, I wake up. I got this incredible stomach ache, and I was on the can for an hour trying to get rid of it. <laughs> and so I'm a little punchy today because I took a I took a little bit of a Xanax to put me back to sleep and to calm my stomach down. So, mm -hmm. um, is, is today's show sponsored by Pepto Bismol or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little bit sponsored partially by Imodian. <laughs> and um, you know what happened? I I, I have IBS, um, which is not a network, it's a stomach disease. Uh, I mean, it, it's just no, and, and when the doctors you say, Well, what is it? And they say, well, we don't know exactly what it is. It's a catch-all for any stomach problems you have, they can't diagnose. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess you got IBS. So then there was this, this drug that I took for the IBS and it really clean, cleared it up. But, uh, and I, and I had a insurance at the time that paid for it, paid for part of it, but I still had to pay some incredible amount of money. So Finally, 
I go to, I, I don't have insurance anymore that will carry it, cover it. So I go up to the local pharmacy and I say, I want this. And they look it up and they say, you want to know what the price is? <laughs> I said, sure. And they write it down on a little piece of paper. She didn't want to tell me. And I look at it and it says $2,100 Whoa. a month. Oh, oh. You just and take, I'm, you just should take peppermint pills. That's well, no, what, what, what my I dog, did, I'll tell you what I did. Daughter did. I started taking probiotics mm. and my IBS went away. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, mm -hmm. probiotics, very good for the, the stomach. So uh, last night, Marjorie bought some like, what was the ravioli, spinach, ra cheese ravioli from, yeah. from Costco. And I had a lot of it. I shouldn't have because it's not on my diet, but I had it. And it's actually the first real infusion of carbs that I've had in a long time. And I think that's what caused it. Because part of my dinner was coming out. <laughs> that's too much information. Uh, it's like my mom go. My theory. It's like my mom telling me. Yeah. That she talked to her old her oldest friend yesterday or this past weekend and she said all we did was talk about the things wrong with us <laughs> are, you, are you ready for this now you're only I'm at that age. you're like 51 52 something like that 55 55 okay I'm yeah but she still she was talking about her friend she said uh, she says she has copd and a UTI that's been there for about five months. And she says, but oh. she can walk because my mom has a little bit of trouble walking. You know, they all have it. And I'm like, would you rather have to walk with a walker or have COPD? Right. Yeah. But, you know, every one of these things are COPD. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or they, 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 when they were advertising for erectile dysfunction, which yeah. quite frankly, nobody wants to say, Hey, I've got erectile dysfunction. <laughs> no, I like the way they the ads, the word. ads say ED and yeah. the and they use a carrot, a limp. Oh, carrot. No, 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 that's for something else. That's for Pyrone's disease. <laughs> it's a limp. It, no, but it's a curved penis. So they, on TV, they have a curved carrot. <laughs> and then they say, if you want to find out more, go to curvedcarrot.com. No. That's I'm not that kidding you. Yes. I'm going to go to that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> wow, this show is taking a turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I, I love the way they make they make all these things not sound like they really are. I have I have uh, uh, OCD or I have uh, yeah. what what did I say I have for my stomach I, uh, IBF IBS IBS you know I have because, RA. because they don't want to say bowel. Yeah. I have SOB. <laughs> you have SOB. <laughs> They could call it Bill Clinton. Congratulations. <laughs> no, because of Monica Lewinsky, we could call it Bill Clinton's disease. There you go. That's yeah. right. BCD. <laughs> yeah, I have BCD. What's that? Bill Clinton disease. Okay. He's not, hey, by the way, he's not looking well, is he? No, he looks oh. so bad. Yeah. But he's almost 80, I think. Is he? Yeah. It's like 77, 70, no, 75. No, but 75. Didn't he have some kind of real bad situation a couple of weeks ago? Or he went yeah. He had to sleep with him. He had to sleep with him. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, um, boy, when he goes, I can hardly wait to see all the stories on TV. Hmm. You know. Is Monica Lewinsky going to have to have her name dragged through the mud one more time? Yeah. Why not? She produced that last one. Did she produced the last, that thing. Yeah. Movie, yeah. And she's doing another one now. She's producing another show. She's, do, you think, uh, hmm? do you think any of the former presidents will go to you know who's funeral? Trump? No. no. <laughs> be, he'll be invited. Does he get uninvited to funerals or does he just not he just doesn't, go? He doesn't go. Yeah. I think it's both. Yeah, both. I think. He was uninvited to McCain. Right? Yeah. I, I yeah. think if Trump died tomorrow, I don't think a single president would show up to. Florida. I agree. I think you're right. I agree. 
And that's the only time we mentioned Trump on this show in weeks. And I didn't say his name. You did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I heard some of his advisors. I bet Biden, I bet Biden some, would go. Some of Trump's advisors. You think Biden are, would go? I think he'd kind of have to. I think he'd be grudgingly put in appearance. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go there just to make sure he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> stay through the heart. Yeah. That's good. By the way, is it true, Shecky? You, you, you always surprise me when I just mentioned a legend and they printed the legend, not the truth. That when, but when, uh, what's his name is dead uh, when he died? Bela Lugosi died. Boris Karloff looked into his coffin and said, Surely you must be kidding, Bela. <laughs> Never heard that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, uh, Vernon. I heard some of Trump's advisors are telling him not to run for president in 2024 because if he loses, then he'll be a total loser like Adlai Stevenson. <laughs> we forget Adelaide Stevenson, don't we? Yeah. That's the guy who he ran lost twice. Three times. Three twice. Times? Yep. Three yeah, times. But, he, but he lost the primary to Kennedy also in 60. But didn't Mitt Romney oh, okay. run twice? Mitt Romney? He was the cat. He was the candidate for president twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. What really? Mitt what Romney? Was he before? <laughs> We're talking about Adlai Stevenson. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mitt Romney only about... ran for president mm -hmm. once. He he no, Adlai Stevenson. Well, Adlai Stevenson yeah. ran twice for president. And lost. And he lost to Dwight Eisenhower. Yep. Both times. And Harold Stassen ran that 77 times. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But, well, of course, but I it mean, didn't count. When you, when you awesome. talk about when you talk, talk about Stevenson running the second time, I think the reason they let him run the second time is they went, "Well, this is going against the guy who's already president, so he's going to lose let anyway. Him let him run, man. Let him yeah. feel good about it." Yeah, but if there's one thing Trump hates is losers. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-loathing now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he's not going to listen to his advisors because he didn't lose the last election. That's right. That's right. But let's let's not get into Trump. Yeah, we're out. I'd like this show to be Trump. Okay, let's move on to Jay Leno. Oh yes. oh yes, oh yes, good one. Good one. You sent me a, 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 a news item Deadline about that, Hollywood. and then I wrote you back. Uh, oh my, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Tell them, tell them what. What's that? You're not going to believe. They let, there's some movie what's about that? the Beatles. The Beatles. Yeah. Jay Leno will be playing Ed Sullivan. Oh, oh no. my oh. god! What? <laughs> Have you <laughs> seen that shit that he's on on TV during the day? Of, you bet your life. You bet your life. Oh my god! It's unwatchable. I think yeah. it's now called "You Bet Your Career." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better change the but, channel. I mean, why would you? <laughs> Of all people to play Ed Sullivan, yeah, why would you weird. hire Jay Leno? That's really weird. Are they, are they gonna shave his chin? <laughs> <laughs> the guy will do anything, I guess. I don't know. Wow. That uh well, he's he, very he's very involved with cars and stuff like that. Well, his car well, show, the car show. The car show's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. a little love of his. It, it, he does it well. Um, you know, uh, I I watch by myself watching it sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, you bet your life. Come on. I don't watch that. <laughs> well, they've tried it several times in recent years, and they don't understand that the show was just. It was the all, Groucho Marx show. It was a Groucho Marx show that had yeah. a little bit of a game show mixed in. <laughs> Yeah, he can't carry that. At it was all. kind of like the, the game was kind of like a toy in Cracker Jack. You have to get through all the Cracker Jack to get to the door. <laughs> yeah, it's been nice talking to you. It's time to play the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then he asks you four questions and you then get to go on to the final round or something. I like think that. it was an excuse for people to be on TV in the 50s or something, it seems like. I never could figure out why that, why they, you know, why they made it a game show. Yeah. Because guess, that was the thing in the 50s, a game show. They, you know. Yeah, they probably felt that by running it as a game show, they get more listeners than if they just made it. Groucho mm. talking to people for half an hour. The Groucho market. But I don't think Groucho was, was the first guy, was he? Yes. yes. Yeah. Really? For You Bet Your Life, he was. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was on radio originally, and then it became a TV show. Was it show. on radio with Groucho? 
Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. 1949 or 48, it started on radio. One of the last radio shows. Mm -hmm. And they also, it was simulcast on radio when he was doing the TV show. Mm -hmm. It still aired on radio. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, though. um, uh, He, um, what was the last radio show? (laughs) I mean, they did run newscasts and stuff, but I mean, aside from that, the last actual well, produced radio show was one of the soap operas, probably. I think no, I think it was either Gunsmoke. Well, Gunsmoke went till around sixty-one, I think. Yeah, but supposedly the last fully produced with orchestra and everything shows one of those kind of things. There were two of them, and I, it's it's a tie between the Big Show with the Lula Bankhead. No, that that air that went off the air in fifty-two. Okay, that was one of the last big shows. But then the one that I think was the last was a Stan Freeberg show. Well, Stan Freeberg was like 56, 57. Yeah. And it was a full-on radio show. You, yeah. mean, like, you mean like Breakfast with Bennett? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 what I did, what I was doing when I did those kind of things, we used to go out, and I don't know if you guys are, all you guys are familiar with what I did in my career, but we did these uh, these shows, and we did them from like uh, big venues, Fair uh, hotels, and so on, with a full orchestra and comedians doing comedy and so on and so forth. And I did it because it was my tribute to that was the kind of radio I grew up on. So that was yeah. the kind of radio I wanted to do with a live audience and everything. You know, it was so exciting to be there. It was so much fun to watch the production happen. It was yeah. great. It was great. What production? Well, you know, you guys were just always <laughs> running around and doing stuff, and and uh, I don't know, it just was exciting to be there. Plus, it was seven o'clock in the morning; I was drunk off my ass. Oh yeah, well, we had, there was a difference. There was breakfast with Bennett, right? Those were the ones we did occasionally. We went out about a once a month, went somewhere and did the show. Yeah, and uh, then there was supper with Schwarzman, which we yeah. did on yeah. in, in, just before Christmas. At the Fairmont Hotel to begin with, and later on a club called Bimbo's. Um, I was at the Fairmont show. I, it was amazing. Fairmont shows were wonderful, just wonderful. Full orchestra. Yeah. Yep. Uh, amazing. Great, just great amazing. Show. Yeah. Well, yeah. I used to be a big shot. What the heck? <clears throat> you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, what movie is that from, Shecky? I'm going up on it at the moment. He, though used, I feel to be, like he used to be a big shot. Up on the stairs in front of oh, the church. Oh, um, um, Roaring Twenties. Bingo. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was great hearing you with Slayton the other night, too, by the way. That was excellent. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bobby. Yeah. You know. 12, 12 years ago today, I was with him at one of his shows. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. He'll take a picture with anybody, won't he? Would- he will, yeah. I got a pic. I got a picture with him where it looks like he's giving me a hand job. Everybody I posted, it says, "My God, is that guy giving you a hand job?" <laughs> and he's got a new book out. No, I know. It, it, was that picture taken with a, a phone that you could do a selfie? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Because you know who invented the selfie? Uh, Shecky. Shecky did. <clears throat> oh, come on! How what you used to do, Shecky? Well, when I was on my trips, I would just take a picture of me, like, <laughs> against the background, mm-hmm. like, you, you know, know, wherever I was, you know, was I was real the Galapagos Islands or wherever. We you should know. put we should put all those together and put them online or something, because they're really <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like a time capsule. The only way you could do a selfie was to take your camera right. and turn it towards yourself. And sometimes I would take like 10 of them to get like the right framing. Yeah, but you couldn't see, oh yeah, you could see them. You no, in those see. days you didn't have that reverse camera. Mm-hmm. No, you didn't have the reverse camera. What I'm saying is you could see so the result. Up. You could see the result short time after that. Yeah, and yeah. then it's like, if I didn't like the framing, I would take another one, you know. And there was no personality in his face at all. I mean, it was give me that face. Well, that's again. why when people see a photo of me there smiling, we go. there we go. There's a good example. Like, like Alex <laughs> took the photo. Yeah. You know, if you, see, if you took the photo, I'll smile. But if I'm taking the photo, I'm not smiling. Where'd you get that photo, uh, 
It's on his Facebook page. His Facebook uh, page. So that's a good example of, of his. Uh, you got another one there you can show? <laughs> there we go. That, and they're all the same. <laughs> By the way, that's the 103rd floor of the Empire State Building. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. We got a private them. tour of it one day, me and my friend Kathy. And there is no barrier there. The barrier is about six feet high. Really? Otherwise, you're just oh, God. outside. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. Makes me it was it. scary, I have to admit. It was scary. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm not going to. That's, that's where the blimp, the dirigibles used to duck. Oh, wow. Huh. And you used to get off the dirigible how? You get off the dirigible. Then there was a staircase. Like when you went up to the 103rd floor, you have to climb up a stairs. Yeah. You know, a ladder to okay. get up there. Yeah. So how did the people, when they got off the dirigible, did they have to go down a ladder? Yep. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what a bad idea uh, that was. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was only like a year or two they had the dirigibles landing there. When yeah. was that? Or tying up, you mean? Like That's 32, pretty, 33, 30, whatever, 30. you know. Really? Before the Hindenburg. Yeah, when was the Hindenburg? That was 30, <laughs> 37 or 38, I guess. You but know, that was in Lakeland. That was in New Jersey. Where I, I can't remember the exact number. But when you ask how many people died in the crash of the Hindenburg, which is not that many, like like two or three, there were not a lot of people that got killed in that. No, because no. what happened is it came down quietly. It was on fire. People ran out of the flames and out of the uh, it, it, the wasn't, it wasn't a kind of tragedy that was it looked mm -hmm. hellacious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because again, a dirigible, you know, again, there was the, can I call it the cabin was below the, yeah, it was on the dirigible belt. portion that right. caught fire. Yeah. So, so uh, by the time it hit the ground, those people were able to get out of the cabin portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there weren't that many people who died in the, in the run like crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it might have just been the people who were working within the dirigible, you know, that portion of the dirigible. Yeah, right, right. Uh, let me see. I, I didn't even look to see if we're on okay. I <laughs> well, it says record. What? Oh, wait a minute. I know it says record. Live on Facebook. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just looking to see. Oh, there we go. I just want to see if we're... I, I didn't put up my, uh, my thing until about an hour ago I've, i i forgot today because i had to go to my neurologist <laughs> which is it's my most uneventful you know the uh, 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 doctor that i go to he sticks a pin in my feet does that hurt does that hurt do you feel this do you feel that goodbye see you in six months <laughs> and it's oh, always wow. see you in six months so what i'm thinking of doing next time is just saying why don't we just do an every six month appointment from here until, oh, I don't know, the That's year. What I do. Uh, the 2015 or some, or 2030 or something like that, you know. And I'll well, hope that I can make all of them. It'll give you something to live for. Yeah. Something to live for. <laughs> Motivation. Um, and he's Thank one of the you. most, he's one of the most exciting doctors I have. I can't imagine how boring that job is being a neurologist <laughs> and just sticking paper clips in people's feet and saying, <laughs> uh, well, hands. <laughs> uh, in one, well, this foot seems a little worse than that foot, but you're okay. Just keep taking the medicine. Uh, I'll see you in, in six months. Okay, fine. You know, um, but uh, so uh, uh, what is Mandy working on today? What, uh, is it interesting? Is it fascinating? Is it something you can let us in on? Well, I was finishing this. This leather bound book that I have to do every month. This is all the financials for my boss. Uh -huh. nice. So that's 50 gazillion tabs, you know. So I was finishing that. Yeah. And then now I'm working on the, um, there's a charity. We have a charity here. My boss has a charity for kids. So I'm just working oh. on some donation stuff for that. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. So you do kind of the same thing, don't you, Marjorie? Yeah, I run an office. Yeah, she runs an office. Yeah. And you got to make reports every month, right? Yeah, financial stuff. Close the books, as yeah. they say. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your official job, Mandy? Is you like an account there or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a like a on the accountant, like at the home office. So he this couple has many businesses. So yeah, I just have to do all the accounting for all the different companies they have. Yeah. How do you feel? I, and I asked Marjorie this too. You can answer this, Marjorie, about the fact that you're dealing with sometimes millions of dollars, can I say? Oh, yeah. Okay. Easily. Do you ever think, hey, you know, I could just siphon off a little of this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but there's there's people that do it. I know, but no. I'll... I mean, Marjorie deals in millions all the time, right, Marjorie? Yeah, but I don't touch it. I'm no, not... I really don't touch it. But do you ever kind it. of think, Jesus, this is a lot of money for people to have and for me not to have? And I have but, we, a lot but there's always that, controls in place where yeah, I have a lot of people yeah. that look at the financials that I right. sell. Yeah. Look, I'm not like trying somebody, to... like I write checks and things, but somebody else signs, um, them. signs them. And then yeah. also somebody else reconciles the bank accounts, you know, because if you're, you know, and then I don't have access to, I don't have authority to do wires. I don't have access, you know, anything like that. So. By I the way, them, I can't yeah. approve them. Charlie has his hand up, and there are a lot of things we don't know about Charlie. So, Charlie? <laughs> in 1971 and 1972, I was the head teller for Continental Illinois Bank in Chicago, and I handled at least a million dollars in cash every day. Jesus. Mm -hmm. It looked like green paper. That's all it was to me, is green paper. A million dollars in cash. I, at one time, I handled over three million dollars in cash. You know something? Uh, people always used to say to me, when you stand on stage like the Frost Amphitheater, the 9,000 people out there, what does it look like to you? And I, I said, it looks like green paper. Anyway, I... <laughs> Yeah, but it, 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 but but yet you watch your own money carefully, right? Yeah, you mm -hmm. know it's it's really amazing. It's amazing that we, you know, the rich people, yeah. should, the the rich companies should be forced to count their own money. That's all I'm saying. You know. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny when you just see it all come kind of come together, and you just see how much. You know, it's yeah. it's not fathomable to me how much money to have this much money. Well, do you remember the time when somebody they pay was, me well. when somebody was a billionaire, you went, oh, they're a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And today nobody cares. I mean, mm -hmm. Kylie yeah. Jenner is a billionaire. I know. Don't get no on that. Uh, of course, her, her boyfriend isn't going to have much money sometime soon because yeah. of that concert he gave down in Houston. <gasps> oh, that's her boyfriend? Wow. Yes. yes. Pregnant with the second kid. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, no. yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the, oh, there, there's going to be some legal actions there. Oh, yeah. They already are. are. They already filed billions, two, billions in lawsuits. Two billion dollars. They've, 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 billion, filed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not going to get two billion, but they're, they did two billion. And it's against uh, him, Tra Travis Scott is his Travis name. Travis Scott, I think his name yeah. is. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, Live and the Nation. other rapper, whatever and, his name is. Not, I don't see why it's against them and not against Live Nation. Well, it, it, they're part of it. They're, yeah. they're no, they are part of it. They're being sued too. Their and responsibility. I think, I think to, a lesser, the to a lesser right. extent, I think Apple is being sued because they somehow had an association with this event. They are. Um, the artist doesn't deal with security and you know this and that it's the people putting on the event the promoters yeah but he was telling these people to rush the stage no, or he, he, was was on. On. he wasn't he had done that in the past but he had did but they so they know that's in him to you know he likes that but he didn't do it there and you know the other thing is is that people say to me well you know I, he was he was up there and he didn't pay any attention to blah blah blah, blah. and i went I've been on stage before. Yeah, I know yeah. what you can see and what you can't see. And I know that with the kind of hearing stuff he has, it's meant to block out all sound except the music so that he can hear it. Okay. Um, and uh, 
And there's only so much he could have done. And Even if he said, hey, stop. You it's know, very easy. It's on. very logical that he would be oblivious to what was going on in the back of the hall. Yeah. Okay. And there were people who there were people who went up on the platform where they were filming it and saying this has to stop. There are people dying, and the, they did nothing. They threw him off the platform. They did, but yeah, he not did. the artist. No, not but the he artist. Did. He didn't know what was happening. Oh. And so, and and the people who threw him off were probably security people yeah. hired by who? By oh, patient. Patient. Yeah. yeah, I think there's, but they, you know, they they're not going to care either. They turn this thing whole thing over to uh, their law uh, you know their insurance company okay it's your problem now because they're ins i'm sure they're insured oh yeah, yeah for sure then it made me think probably, about the it probably I, says on the probably says on the back of your ticket in small writing if you get squashed to death it's not our responsibility <laughs> so, yeah it, it, it's like probably, in a baseball game if you get hit right. in the head by a baseball not yeah. our fault. yeah but you know so i question as to whether a good attorney couldn't go in and, and make the claim that just because it's on the back of a ticket in small print nobody reads that crap that's irrelevant it's on the ticket it's yeah. your yeah. responsibility to be aware of that and that's why they do it yeah mm -hmm. well can they absolve themselves of all responsibility by printing it in small print on a ticket <laughs> yeah, they oh, i believe no. so you can't sign away your rights yeah, so you can start. Start. <laughs> yeah it, jeff's going no why jeff I don't know. I I think it's such a an uncommon piece of information that everybody really said, "Whoa, what is this about? What do I have to do? What can I do? Or don't do that because it's on the ticket." Mm -hmm. Nobody said anything to anybody about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like what uh, Apple puts uh, gives you a whole big uh, thing of what do's and don'ts in their contract sure. and everything, and your agreement when you buy a phone from them. How many people have ever read that? <laughs> you just go to the but, very bottom. But, go you, but you hit and go, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, next time, let's all read. It, OK. <laughs> yeah. It probably take you about three, three and a half, four days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I told you there was some one of those medical things on TV, you know, drugs. And as part of the boilerplate, if you're right. constipated or have diarrhea, well, wait a minute. <laughs> How does that, you know, <laughs> you know this drug could do A and B. No, I love all the wonderful things. They do 10 seconds, literally, of selling the drug. Yep. And then help 10 you seconds improve, of very your, fast talk. improve your life with if you have cancer it can help extend your life and you go wow yeah. it's wonderful they say may cause diarrhea may cause uh, you know uh it cures, it cures, it cures death. Death. <laughs> yeah. rectal, and that's the one that gives me rectal itch <laughs> you're gonna take this death. medication to save your life mm -hmm. and that medication might kill you Gee. yeah well what i love are the ones that say well might it's going to extend your life and then in the small print if you look carefully it says uh, about <laughs> three months yeah <laughs> you know so you what you're paying thousands upon thousands of dollars for this drug so you can live three extra months you know mm -hmm. I well maybe... it's like those gambling sites you know where they're telling you to go to FanDuel or whatever, because you're going to make billions of dollars gambling on a football game. Right. And then if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> yeah, they don't say, if we find out you have a gambling problem, we're not going to accept your money. <laughs> no, no, but if you suspect you have a gambling problem, call this number. <laughs> if you suspect you have a gambling problem, tell us so we can talk you out of gambling. I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> no. That's their disclaimer. That's yeah. the way they protect themselves. Like, look, we told get, you, you know. They get, they get know. more. They'd get more people to call Gamblers Anonymous if, like, every the fifth caller would win something. You know that would work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I was listening over the weekend. One of the radio talk show, get you know, sites, sports sites, where this guy is on the air telling us the jet game is the lock of the century <laughs> that the jets will win this game and basically bet your house on the jets guess what <laughs> oh they lost did they really <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> but this guy went on for a good hour well, let's wait a minute let's bring one other thing up and you brought it up to me rick on many an occasion why 
Are football games so important? And it, why do I, I only care no, if because the they, no, because they, win. I don't care if they win by five points because well, I don't gamble. What I'm know. saying is, is that if you found out that, oh, I don't know, football games were being fixed. I mean, if they were being fixed and it was to the advantage of the viewer because they got a better game or something, really all that matters is whether we got a better game or not. But the reason why they mind, they mind if it's fixed is because of the gambling. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the reason that the, the networks carry football like they do, gambling. It's all they're based all, on gambling. They're all sponsored by gambling companies. Yeah, no, well, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. FanDuel, the official sponsor of the new of the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this goes back, and I've said it to you, Alex, back in the 60s, or early 70s, when Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays were thrown out of baseball because they were greeters at a New Jersey casino. Wow. And now FanDuel is advertising, is doing the NFL. Yeah. 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 Or baseball or whatever, you know. Yeah. But at that I point, didn't... two of the greatest players in baseball history yeah, were Pete thrown Rose. out of the game. I mean, this goes back to the day yeah. when I used to, when they used to have these game shows on television, like uh, the $64,000 question and uh, mm -hmm. the big surprise, which was, not the big surprise, so the big. Well, it was a big surprise with one of them. No, no, but I'm thinking of which which was the one that uh, Jack Barry. Exacto. No, no, but Jack Barry did the big money one. Uh, that sixty-four thousand dollar question. No, Charles Van Doren. It was not on the six. Oh. Twenty-one. 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 That was, wow. that was it, and that was the one that got popped. That really got popped, yeah. and all of a sudden, it was not okay to fix a game show. Never had been a problem before. Nobody mm -hmm. ever said you can't. Okay. The reason they fixed the game show was not for the contestant to win. Right. They fixed the game show so they could create excitement for the viewer. Mm -hmm. Well, like, what's my, my line be pre that era? Steve Allen was given like areas of questioning. Mm. Yeah. But it never got popped because the top prize was fifty dollars. Right. Know, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, who cares if the a little uh, little shoemaker who's good at opera is force fed the questions and the answers so that I get a better show? Mm -hmm. I get excitement. I'm sitting at home on the edge of my seat. If doesn't they, matter in professional. Doesn't matter in professional wrestling. Well, exactly. Right. So, so my feeling was when they finally started popping all these shows was. I'm not being hurt. You know, I'm simply, it's a show like any other. I don't believe that when there's a mystery drama that that really is happening. You yeah. know, Survivor, they go into an edit room and they make Alex is the villain. Right. Charlie's the good guy. Even though that, that might not be what really happened on mm -hmm. Island, wherever do, they are. Do you, think, do you think you would really enjoy Jeopardy as much if you found out they were feeding Ken Jennings the answers? <laughs> Well, no, I, I, no. Uh, but it, it, that's but they different. also might pull up subjects that they know this guy mm. is better at than, again, Charlie is. Yeah, they might have done that all. We don't know if they didn't do that all along, you right. know. Yeah. I, I know that they you find out it changes everything, right? Wouldn't it change your whole attitude if you found out? If you don't know, it's fine. It's perfectly entertaining. Well, I don't it, care. Well, still, he had to have the knowledge in these basic areas for it to, you know, to work. Yeah, but they might also know he knows Walt Disney characters. And here, here's a good example. On, on the $64,000 question, there was Dr. Joyce Brothers was on that show. Yeah, she, the boxing she, expert. She was a psychologist, and her expertise was in what? Boxing. 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 Didn't boxing. she say that she really didn't know anything about boxing? No, but she, she went, taught herself. She went home and studied it when they said mm. your subject is going to be boxing. Okay, uh, so she went and studied, and they would tell them. They would also tell them, "Hey, here are the areas you should be concentrating on, because yeah. that's where we'll probably be asking the questions." Yeah, but when she went before the courts or Congress or whatever, she was able to answer every boxing question she was asked. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, but she yeah. was. She was brought to court during that. You know, when the scandal happened. Yeah. Yeah. 
I worked with her at WMCA. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, who do you think is the highest paid person in television right now? Judge Judy. Yeah. Right. Is it really? $45, yeah. $45 million a year. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> now, but now she produces her own show. It's not a network show anymore. So right. she's probably going to make even more. Yeah. But she was making $45 million a year. And I, I, you know, how many here have watched Judge Judy in the last year? Nope. You watched Judge you Judy? You watched it with me the other night. Ah. <laughs> channels and it was on and we watched it. Well, sometimes it's there by accident. Well, we were watching it's it. It's like the time. I got to tell you about Marjorie. <laughs> Why I'm married to this woman, I have no idea. <laughs> It, it, but but don't she, listen to him she she came <laughs> in not. once and i was i was watching jeopardy and what comes on after jeopardy wheel the of fortune, wheel of fortune. Wheel of fortune. Right. so i was the jeopardy had ended i was doing something i don't know my iphone or doing something and all of a sudden uh, uh, a wheel of fortune was on and she then goes around telling everybody alex loves wheel of fortune <laughs> I said he watches it. I don't watch Wheel of Fortune. I never had a reason to watch Wheel of Fortune. The, what I was always amazed by is the smartest show on television, Jeopardy, right? Is yeah. followed by the dumbest show on television. Your luck. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, I mean, what? It's kind of hard. <laughs> It, what, Wheel of Fortune is kind of hard? Yeah, it's kind of hard. You have to solve puzzles. <laughs> I mean, but, you know. Through the living room and just look up and go. I, I don't want to be gross here, but in, in sex is kind of hard, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just kind of making a joke. I used to just walk through the room and just solve it. And my ex-husband would be like, you need to go on that show. You know what I found <laughs> about that show? What I found about that show? Women are better at that than men. For some reason, women can fill those letters in better than guys can. Yeah. I think women are, were always better Scrabble players, I think, for mm -hmm. that reason. You know, they could see words that other people don't. Yeah. So, uh, but I, uh, uh, yeah, she she tells everybody to this day, oh, he loves Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> White. Fortune. No. And yeah. it used to just be prizes and you went shop. Yeah, yeah you had to start with these crappy prizes. No, no, in the money. very beginning, there Ceramic were prizes. They, yeah. they did away yeah. with the prizes. Yeah. There were prizes in the beginning and, and they were the most horrible things. The $600. Yeah, you had to buy them. You know? I'll, take, I'll, I'll take the lamp made out of cowboy boots. For <laughs> <laughs> but do you remember who the original host and hostess was? Uh, yes. The original uh, host wait, wait, wait. was, was, uh, was what's Chuck Woolery. Chuck Woolery. And, Su and, Susan, oh, and Susan Stafford. Wow. 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 I forgot that, but you are right. It was Chuck Woolery. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Jeopardy? Who, who was the Art Fleming. Art Fleming. Jeopardy. Art Fleming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, been, I was in the audience for Jeopardy when it was on NBC with Art Fleming. Wow. Really? Back in the 60s. Yeah. Was that fun? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wayne Howell was the announcer. And, and by the way, the by the way, those, those were the days of analog Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where they didn't oh, there was have... a guy standing well, behind the... the, um, the, yeah. the, the yeah. No, they had to write out, make have some artists write out all the questions. Yeah, but they yeah. also had a guy who would pull yeah. up the $60 yeah. thing when, you know, I'll take whatever for $60 art. And then some guy was behind <laughs> the board, like, you know, pulling did it they up. Pay, did they have to paint each of those or did they have a machine that did it, I wonder? They must have had a printer. But you yeah, there would be a printer in the hey, art. Here, here, here was the big day. It was the day that Vanna no longer turned the numbers. Right. That they went to digital. And so yeah. she would just go over and touch it and it would go bing, uh, bing, bing. I took uh, the NBC studio tour back in the 70s. And as we're walking backstage there, the wheel was there. 
And so the tour moved ahead and I looked around and I'm like, ah, fuck it. And I spun the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the 60s, you would go in the videotape area on the NBC tour and they'd give you a piece of, quote, videotape. It was like, wow, videotape. Oh, geez. That was the same day I saw Carson, too. We actually were in the audience for Carson. That was amazing. Did, you, did you get to take home the piece of videotape? Yeah. 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 <laughs> there would be like a little box of, you know, six inches of videotape. Yeah. The, whatever. The videotape in those days was two inches wide. Yeah. Yeah. It was still the two inch tape. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But it was like, you know, here is a piece of videotape. And everyone's like, you know, wow, yeah. videotape. We lost Mandy, by the way. She probably had to do some work or something. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe your phone died. Uh, Steve, the NBC, every tour, the NBC tour was great back in the day. It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. The Hollywood one was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. They had some they had some good stuff back there because well, the best tour that. the best tour that I ever took of anything I took was Shecky. We went to the Sun Records. Oh yeah, that was great. Wasn't well, it? Was that a tour? Or did we just go in there, or was there an actual not, tour guide? I can't it, remember. The, I think you had to pay to go in there. If I remember, there's not, much, there's not much to tour. You know, first, know. first you go into the building next door, and it's like a whole museum of right. stuff, and it's interesting. It's fascinating. And then you go into the actual studio, the Sun Record studio. And that was wonderful. And then we went to Elvis's uh, place. Uh, yes, the carpeting on the ceiling place. Right. Oh, <laughs> man. Is, is that a, an exercise in bad fucking taste? The jungle room. <laughs> so funny. So yeah. funny. And then, of course, the Danny... I think we talked, maybe it was last week we talked about it, the Danny Thomas, you know, oh, St. Jude's. Well, we went to St. Jude's, yeah. because we went, You know, where he had the Last Supper on the wall recreating his dining room. Oh, brother. Wow. Yeah, and and uh, it was a big deal at that uh, 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 St. Jude's. And it was the Danny Thomas Museum, wasn't it? Was, uh, that was yeah, called? yeah. And he's buried there. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. Did we go Did by they... the tomb? Today was uh, Rodney Dangerfield's hundredth birthday. Would it would have been? Oh wow! Really? Yeah. Well, it, today. Well, what is today? It's JFK. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. JFK, right. Yeah. And now here's the funny part 15. about it. Marjorie. You watch MSNBC all day long. Have they mentioned yeah. Kennedy's death today? I I only heard it early in the morning. Did Did they mention it? I didn't. I didn't hear the whole thing. I, when I listened, no, I didn't. No, hear. What I'm saying is, did they mention the death no. of JFK? That's no, how I time didn't. has passed. Because when I was a kid, every year, man, they'd mark it. Today was the day that Kennedy was killed, and yeah. now we're getting to the point where they go, oh, "Who was killed?" I, I looked at the calendar today, and I went, oh, "It was the 22nd." You know, and nobody's mentioned it anywhere. It was like, who was Kennedy? Yeah, but it's also 50, what, 55 years ago now? I, I know it was 55 mm -hmm. years ago, but you would think they'd still be mentioned. I mean, it, it's all over the social media. I mean, every, any, well, as soon as I looked at Facebook social. and Twitter, like, where were you on this day? Well, I saw some picture. It was like Jackie and John Kennedy in the car right before he got his head blown off. You know, I saw a picture <laughs> of that today on Facebook. Yeah. But of course, you know he's still alive. Him and JFK Jr. Yeah, along with JFK Jr. Yeah. Well, according to QAnon, JFK Jr. is still alive. I don't yeah. know why yeah. that's important, but he's still alive. Because he's going to be a Trump's great pilot, mate. you know. Huh? He's yeah. going to be Trump's running mate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's what they QAnon thinks. That's what they said. They didn't do the math that he was a Democrat. <laughs> Yeah, Democrats live forever. Yeah. So anyway, uh, 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 Vernon, you've been kind of quiet yeah. today. Anything on your mind at all? No, I just wish uh, COVID would go ahead and go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's really a, the uh, that's up to the people to do. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, I think Austria has been today? shut down because of COVID. Who did? What as of last Friday, what? as of last Friday, we had 212 new deaths in Kentucky. So. Oh boy! How about how about Charlie? You got you usually have the information on that. Yeah, well, I, I was just saying we, we're getting 
we've actually been increasing cases the last couple of weeks. We're back up to 96,000 cases a day when we were down to like 60,000 cases a day a couple of weeks ago. How many deaths are we up to? It's about 1,200 a day. No, but I mean, how many? Oh, 771,000. Yeah, almost 800. Almost 800. Yep. Wow. wow. At the end of the year. Surpassed. We've essentially you, surpassed the number a, of deaths in 2021. We've kind of run out of time here, but do you think that's an underestimate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well, anyway. Hey, listen. Oh. Uh, another another Monday has gone by, and it's been just another pleasant Monday with a bunch of pleasant people, and uh, they include Charlie Wallace and Rick Sheckman and Edward Berger. Oh, say something, Edward. That's right. <laughs> that's all, folks. That's, that's all, uh, that's all folks. <laughs> uh, say, I'm going to go out hunting wabbits. I'm going to go out hunting wabbits. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah, uh, right. Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, oh. ben, uh, always a pleasure to have you here. Steve, my new friend uh, I made here in New York. Are you going to come and see us soon? I hope so. Have a good Thanksgiving. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. we're, having, we're having dinner. We're making a dinner. <laughs> Shecky was invited, but he's got to go hang out with his brother. So, but come Yeah, I get to go to the really expensive dinner. Yeah. <laughs> But come afterwards. Yeah, no, definitely. Really, come by, come by afterwards, because uh, uh, certain people and their dog is not coming. So, uh. <laughs> you know, so you can come by, come see our new apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've seen the old apartment. Yeah, well, this is just like the old apartment, only newer. Only yeah. newer. Oh, by the way, more, our our more move, sound bars. Uh, this is before we go. Our apartment complex is in a movie that's out now and it's, play, it's playing on netflix it's called passing and it, it look for it the very end takes place in our apartment uh, uh, complex oh cool and our, and our courtyard yes yeah, the Ozart in the jungle took place in your apartment complex. yes it did and uh, so pan am was uh, filmed here part of it Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but the, in that film it, it we we didn't know it was going to be in there we're sitting there watching a Oh, that's our courtyard. <laughs> and then they filmed it in one of the apartments. So oh, cool. you know what what we can do now, Marjorie, now that we are now you can rent out your apartment. Yeah, we can rent it out for movies. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh anyway, uh thanks to uh Edward Burger. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Len Frisco. Oh, pff, little Frisco. <laughs> Don't call it Frisco. <laughs> no. Uh, Steve Bender. Uh, Marjorie Miller, known as OK Mills, and of course, uh, the uh, wonderful, uh, and he's been with us for a long time. We love him. Vernon uh, is with us as well. Uh, why don't you all kind of give a big wave goodbye? I'll wave goodbye at you. And thanks the, thank the audience for being here. And yeah. happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. 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 Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Enjoy.